If we're going to protect ourselves and we're going to ultimately conquer historic fundamental Islam, then we have to stop financing, training, and equipping so-called moderate Muslims. Okay? Well, they're going to fight against Al-Qaeda or ISIS or some other terrorist group. No, they're really not. With all that money we just spent to train people, one of the numbers that I keep hearing is that there's five. We spent a half a billion dollars. That's $100 million per dude. I don't think that he can even manage $100 worth of equipment, really and truly. Okay? We know that a lot of the weapons we've given to the so-called moderates have ended up with ISIS. ISIS is using our weapons to kill innocent people because our leaders are so stupid as to think that they are going to arm a moderate Muslim. Are you a moderate Muslim? Not. That's yes in Arabic. You promise to not fight against Americans? La, la. God save us. We've got to stop. Okay? You know, you know how easy it is for these moderates to turn out to be liars, thieves, terrorists? Their, their loyalty is to the house of Islam, not to the house of infidels. They, they want to get out Assad. So who do you think we're willing to fight Assad? That's people who believe in Sharia law, Sunni Muslims, because Assad is a Shiite. It's, it's stupid. It's stupidity. If you want to arm somebody over there, arm the Christians, the Jews, the Yazadis, the, 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 the Kurds. Arm minorities in areas that are at war. At least give them a chance to defend themselves. And maybe they could be a force to stop ISIS. Maybe instead of 100 of them dying, maybe only 50 will die and they'll kill 10 ISIS monsters in the process. Here's something else we need to do. Hear me. Our military needs to wage wars of vengeance. Wars of vengeance, not nation building. Okay? Here's what I mean. When terrorists on foreign soil or from foreign soil strike us, we need to fight quickly and fiercely to kill as many of them as possible and then leave. Leave with their dead scattered around, leave with their buildings on fire. And when they deliberately hide among their fellow Muslims, we still need to kill the terrorists and then just accept the collateral damage. Oh, Randall, how could you say that? I'll tell you how. Because we don't know if these so-called innocent civilians, human shields, we don't know how many of them are going along with this. They know that they're harboring terrorists. And when this happens enough times, okay, the terrorists are going to understand that they're going to die no matter where they hide. And if they value their human shields, they'll stop using them as pawns. And if the human shields are in fact on their side, so be it. Let them die too. We've got to forsake the idea of nation building until a Muslim nation is ready to abandon any loyalty to Sharia law. Okay? That means they're ready to have total freedom. Or until we're prepared to use force to break the back of Sharia law. I mean, think about this insanity. You might not know this. After millions of lives and billions of dollars were spent to build the nations of Iraq and Afghanistan, both nations said in their new constitutions that they were building their country on the principles of, you got it, Muslim Sharia law. This, this type of nation building is doomed to failure. Here's something else. When mosques are used in other countries as military outposts, they should be completely destroyed with every terrorist who hides there buried in the rubble. We will not allow a mosque to claim some type of religious exemption when it is in fact an outpost, a military outpost. When we, you know what? I gotta take a break, but I wanna say this. When we fight Muslim terrorists on foreign soil, maybe we need to fight them on their terms. Perhaps we should reassess taking prisoners of war. We've seen what happens to Western prisoners of war who fight over there. If they get captured, they are paraded in front of the camera and then they are decapitated or burned alive. And we've seen what the Muslim prisoners at Guantanamo Bay did, okay? When they were released after years in prison with great treatment and great food, allowed to have their Quran and study their 
their religion. They were released. And what'd they do? They went right back to fighting and killing Americans. So maybe it's time for us to give them their wish when we meet them on a field of battle. Send them to Allah. Okay, kill them all on a field of battle. Take no prisoners. Thank <laughs> you.